Marcos, Mark chapter 14. Now the Pesach and the festival of Matzot was after two days, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to take him through treachery and put him to death. And they said, Not at the festival, lest there shall be an uproar of the people. And while he was in Beth Anya, in the house of Shimon the leper, and sitting at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of perfume, genuine nard, very costly. And breaking the flask, she poured it on his head. But there were some who were much displeased among themselves and said, Why was this perfume wasted? For it could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and given to the poor. And they were scolding her. But Yeshua said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and you are able to do good to them whenever you wish. But you do not always have me. What she had, she used. She took it beforehand to anoint my body for the burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in all the world, what this woman did shall also be spoken of to her remembrance. And Yehuda from Kerioth, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to deliver him up to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him silver. And he was seeking how to deliver him up conveniently. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they were slaughtering the Pesach lamb, his taught one said to him, Where do you wish us to go and prepare for you to eat the Pesach? And he sent out two of his taught ones and said to them, Go into the city, and there a man bearing a jar of water shall meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, where is the guest room in which I am to eat the Pesach with my top ones? And he shall show you a large upper room, furnished, ready. Prepare for us there. And his top ones went out and came into the city and found it as he said to them. And they prepared the Pesach. And having come, and evening having come, he came with the twelve. And as they sat and ate, Yeshua said, Truly I say to you, one of you who is eating with me shall deliver me up. And they began to be grieved and to say to him, one by one, Is it I? And another, Is it I? And he answering said to them, It is one of the twelve, he who is dipping with me in the dish. The son of Adam is indeed going, as it has been written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of Adam is delivered up. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread, having blessed it broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And taking the cup, giving thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, that of the renewed covenant, which is shed for many. Truly I say to you, I shall certainly no more drink of the fruit of the vine till that day when I drink it anew in the reign of Elohim. And having sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Yeshua said to them, All of you shall stumble in me this night, for it has been written, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after I am raised, I shall go before you to Galil. And Kepha said to him, Even if all shall stumble, yet not I. And Yeshua said to him, Truly I say to you that today, this night, before the cock shall crow twice, you shall deny me three times. But he spoke more strongly. If I have to die with you, I shall not deny you. And they all said the same. And they came to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his taught ones, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Kepha and Yaakov and Yohanan. And he began to be greatly amazed and to be deeply distressed. And he said to them, my being is exceedingly grieved, even to death. Stay here and watch. And he went on a little, and fell on the ground, and was praying, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all is possible for you. Make this cup pass from me. Yet not what I desire, but what you desire. And he came and found them sleeping, and said to Kepha, Shimon, are you sleeping? You were not able to watch one hour. Watch and pray lest you enter into trial. 
The spirit indeed is eager, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, and spoke the same words. And having returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. See, the Son of Adam is being delivered up into the hands of the sinners. Rise up, let us go. See, he who is delivering me up has drawn near. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Yehuda, one of the twelve, with a large crowd with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And the one who was delivering him up had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, it is he. Seize him and lead him away safely. And coming, going straight to him, he said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and seized him. And one of those standing by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Yeshua answering said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? Daily I was with you in the set-apart place, teaching, and you did not seize me, but let the scriptures be filled. And they all left him and fled. And a certain young man was following him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And when they seized him, he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Yeshua away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together to him. And Kepha followed him at a distance, even into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the officers and warming himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council were seeking witness against Yeshua to put him to death, and they were finding none. For many bore false witness against him, but their evidences did not agree. And some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, we heard him saying, I shall destroy this dwelling place that is made with hands, and within three days I shall build another made without hands. And not even then did their witness agree. Then the high priest stood up in the center and asked Yeshua, saying, Have you no answer to make? What do these witnesses against you? What do these witness against you? But he remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, saying to him, are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed? And Yeshua said, I am, and you shall see the Son of Adam sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of the heaven. And tearing his garments, the high priest said, What further need we? What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be liable to death. And some began to spit on him, and to blindfold him, and to beat him, and to say to him, Prophesy! And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. And as Kepha was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Kepha warming himself, she looked at him and said, And you were with Yeshua of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out onto the porch, and a cock crowed. And the servant girl saw him again, and began to say to those who stood by, This is one of them. And again he was denying it. And after a little while, those who stood by again said to Kepha, Truly, you are one of them, for you are a Galilean too, and your speech is alike. And he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And the second time the cock crowed, and Kepha remembered the word that Yeshua had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. And thinking on it, he wept.